Welcome to Butterflies of Wisdom, everyone. I don't know how lucky I have it to interview creative rock stars like the guests I have with me today. I have Chris Martin in Chris Martin studio, and he's not only a creative, he's also a podcaster of one of my favorite podcasts. So it's called Getting Work to Work. And all he does is interviews creatives and just solo episodes. And the, the cover art was just really cool, and it's really cool. So if you guys are listening to this um, podcast, this episode will be out next Wednesday, which next Wednesday is July, so this episode won't be out until July. But if you stop, and type in Getting the Work to Work in iTunes, you'll find Chris's podcast, and you'll become addicted to it. So, without further ado, I'm going to let Mr. Chris take it away. Thank you, Wynn. Thank you for having me on your podcast. And uh, it means a lot to me that uh, you enjoy my podcast so much. And uh, I can't wait to have you as a guest on mine one of these days. That is true. That is true. So, Chris, to kick it off, now I'm going to phrase this question as pick your favorite child. What has been your favorite episode that you have done that my fan base should go listen to? Oh, my gosh. You know, I am partial to the interview episodes, uh, which ironically happen to be the even number episodes. Uh, but this recent one that released this morning was actually with someone that I went to middle school and high school with, and we were never really in the same circles, you know, at that time, but now we're both uh, running creative businesses in town, and it was just fun to reconnect and talk about creativity and talk about design and just talk about how we can encourage people to grow and do better work. Well, as I said to you, Chris, before I started, it's called, I caught a little bit of that episode, and my God, your interviewee was so passionate about creative work that it was, it got me passionate more and more about doing my podcast, so thank you for that, because as yeah, you know, right. producing a podcast is a heck of a lot of work. It's a heck of a lot of work and a heck of a lot of time. So, Chris, what is your favorite book? And it doesn't have to be a creative book. It just has to be a book that you go back to time and time again. Mm -hmm. So, the book I usually go back to is The Count of Monte Cristo. And uh, I'm not entirely sure why, because it's not the it's not the shortest book to read, and it's not the most, uh, I guess, uplifting book to read, but I think there's something about it where the character goes through such horrendous ordeals, exacts revenge, and I don't know if it's he doesn't win in the end, and he, he has to really reconcile with just these deep, deep issues. And I don't. I just keep coming back to this book occasionally, and it just. It, I just love the humanity in the book. Well, isn't that interesting? That he's a fighter. I'm a fighter. All creatives are fighters because this creative industry is not easy. So, for those of you who don't know, I'm actually going creative build starting in. September, I'm uh, actually making a job change to be more creative than I am now. So, Chris, what is your advice for, let's say, a person coming out of graphic design school or just got that photography degree and now they realize, oh, I have to do something with this degree? What would be your advice? My advice to you know, any creative individual that's 
got the degree or got the ability or has the desire is to, I think, really develop that daily practice of not only, you know, committing to creating work, but also sharing it and publishing it with people. I think the, the biggest thing that creative individuals uh, worry too much about is, is whether it's perfect or not, or whether it's going to stand up against all of the amazing work that we see on the Internet. And uh, creatives just need to crank it out, pump out the work, and, and get better. Now, do you consider a podcast part of the creative field? Oh, absolutely. It's it's inherently creative because, you know, if you just record someone and uh, rely upon the, just the conversation, you know, there's artistry in the questions that are asked. There's artistry in the way that, that you follow up. There's artistry in the music. There's artistry in the edit. And so it's, it's yeah, it's, it's a hugely creative field. Okay. So you think um, podcasting, which is the latest and greatest thing, is part of the creative field. I know publishing books are, but I didn't realize up until today that I'm processing my craft every single day of interviewing people, and I'm actually going in to fashion journalism, believe it or not. So um, this will be part of it. This will be um, part of my portfolio for um, when I graduate from the Academy of Arts in San Francisco um, with fashion journalism. And granted, my creative pursuits may be changing over time, but um, as long as Chris thinks the podcast is creative, I'm good on that. I'm good on that. So... What has been your favorite entrepreneurial moment in all this? Wow, that's that's such a huge question. It's it's as I was reflecting on it, it's you know, I've been doing what I've been doing for almost twelve years now. And I think that is a proud moment to say that, you know, through all the ups and downs I'm still going at it and I still have that creative spark and desire to continue making. Uh, and so I think that would be my, my favorite entrepreneurial moment. Uh, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build upon that just a touch because not only staying, you know, in business for 12 years, but this year alone I've connected with amazing people such as yourself, and it's really refueled that passion to keep making. And so connecting with people and really having that chance of hearing their stories fuels me in ways that I can't even comprehend. Wow, well, isn't that cool? And I know the creative business is a tough one because if we don't produce, we don't get paid. I'm sorry, but that's how it rolls. And so what has been your biggest entrepreneurial struggle in all this? Uh, my struggle? Yeah. Uh, you know, my biggest struggle over the years was just myself. You know, I would get in the way of, of my pursuits with a lack of confidence in, in my education and my ability. And so it was the, everything in between my ears that was getting in the way, and I was second <laughs> And I, I love it. And I would, I love it. And I would let people, you know, get me, you know, off the path that I was on, and and I would worry about what other people thought. And uh, I'm I'm editing a video right now of a of a screen print wall art uh, producer, and he said in the interview, you know, if I worried about what people were thinking, I would never make art. And and there's something so inherently profound in that that when we let other people infect our brain, even if it's ourselves, and stop producing, it just it creates nothing. And I definitely, definitely, definitely agree. I um, 
Bite books. I am working on my seventh and eighth book right now, and then I'm I have a ninth coming out in September. So I have nine books in my name, and that is yeah, awesome. if we stop and don't let ourselves create, no one is going to put us back on the path. And I um. I tried to go back to college, and then I, then life got in the way, and my original college didn't have the degree I want. I, I wanted. I said, okay, this is the time to go pursue my passion and get paid for it. Enough with the only squat, bouncing around the tree here, and I'm like, no. And so if Everyone stops us. We won't have the time or the ambition to create beautiful pieces of artwork, whether it be a podcast or whether it be a book or whether it be a sculpture or whether it be a beautiful piece of photography or you name it, you have to create it. Don't you agree with that, Chris? Absolutely. I mean, we can't. We can't sit around waiting for permission. We can't sit around waiting for inspiration to strike. Uh, we just have to simply get started. Yes. And, Chris, what is your favorite podcast that you listen to? I know mine is one of your favorites, but now let's turn the tables on you and tell my audience what they should go listen to. Other than get Getting work to work. <laughs> the irony is I don't listen to a lot of podcasts. I go through phases where I'll sit down and I'll, I'll listen to uh, The Fizzle Show, uh, which is about, uh, you know, entrepreneurial efforts. Uh, another one that, that I'll occasionally listen to is Tim Ferriss' show and then Mark Maron's show. But I'm relatively new to the podcast space in terms of listening to them. Because I'm I'm such a huge music fan, and so when I'm working, I I can't listen to other people talk. I have to listen to music, and and so uh, finding time to sit down and listen to podcasts is a challenge for me. I understand. I understand. When I'm working on a book, I don't listen to podcasts. I can't I can't <laughs> listen to other people talk. I need music. But that being said, what is your favorite band that you get in the zone with? Oh, man. I I go back to, you know, my childhood listening to the band Metallica and uh, the band Dream Theater. They're a progressive rock band. Uh, but uh, one of my favorite artists right now is a guy named Neil Morse. And he writes these giant concept albums around I, – I, his latest album is a, a concept album that's two and a half hours long based upon John Bunyan's The Pilgrim's Progress. So it's just – I don't I, – I, I really get into this, this, like, epic journey through, you know, time, literature, and music. <laughs> and what would be your favorite – technology tool that you use on a daily basis? I am a huge fan of the Adobe Creative Cloud Suite. Uh, everything I that I do. I know. I, you know I, was, I was so happy when they moved to the subscription plan because all the tools became readily available at, at very affordable costs. And, you know, I'm not meaning to give a, a pitch for Adobe by any means, but, you know, I, I use almost everything that they offer, be it Photoshop, Illustrator for design work to Premiere for editing video, and then I edit and record my podcast uh, with Audition. So everything that they offer I'm using in some way or another. Now, are you on a Mac or a PC? Uh, I'm on a Mac, but I started on a PC because that's what I had. And so oftentimes what I'll tell creative people is don't worry what the logo is on your machine. Just worry about what's pumping out of that machine. Yeah, okay. Okay. 
figured you were going to say that. I'm on the Mac. I've been on Mac for years. I've been on Mac products for years. Mm-hmm. But um, Mac is more of the creative side. But I'm coming to find out that PCs are getting more and more creative because they're cheaper than a Mac. Mm-hmm. Definitely. So what um, what has been your favorite piece of artwork you have worked on other than your podcast? Uh, you know, I've done a video series since 2010 of just interesting people uh, over the years in my hometown of Vancouver, Washington. And so it's a video series called Innovators of Vancouver. And the previous episode, prior to the one that I'm editing today, actually, is on a blind, fine woodworker. And that has to be did tell me that. my favorite. You told piece. me that in our initial phone call. You did tell mm-hmm. me that. And so that video is finally coming out. You did tell me that I think when we talked in our initial phone call, you said, I just recorded this video, and it's for the blind window of the... And where can the people find this fascinating video? Uh, it's on my website, chrismartinstudios.com, or you can go straight to uh, Innovators of Vancouver on Facebook. And so it's there's a million places that you can find it online. And uh, what's great is I just I love I love watching him work because he's 100% blind. He has a great sense of humor. He's like I have to feel the wood as it turns on the lathe, or else it would look like a blind man made it. And he starts just cracking up, and I just I love that attitude of just like you know what I'm blind, but I make beautiful work. And and that's just so inspiring to me. That's just so inspiring to all of us. Okay, now we got the blind smoke. Okay. So, um, what would be your best? I know you teach, too. So, I know you're an adjunct professor. So, what would be your best piece of advice to a student that wants to get into the creative field that I'm not talking about graphic design or work. I'm not talking about photography. I'm just talking about in general. Mm-hmm. I, I see many different types of students from, you know, 16 all the way up to 65. And the thing that I, I guess the advice that I would give a student who's going to college to, to study the creative arts is first, have an extremely open mind about what you're learning. You're going to be exposed to so many different styles, so many different types of art, and, and that if, you're, if you close your mind off to what is possible, you don't really take the time to, to really embrace what you're learning. Uh, sometimes students will want to immediately be proficient and immediately be perfect. And so that is that form of limitation that closes them off to what is possible because of that, that desire to be perfect if it doesn't come natural to them. I agree. The desire to be perfect. You can't be perfect in the creative field. I'm sorry, you guys. But you can't because mm-hmm. art, art is in the eye of the beholder. They may not like your pieces, Ryan, but you do. Mm-hmm. And so, and so uh, you know, students just, they not being perfect, having an open mind, and really just falling in love with not only the craft that you're working with, but enjoying the people that you're with. Uh, I find that the people that build community uh, around them are the ones that succeed, that do better, uh, and they enjoy it a whole lot more. I agree. I definitely agree. I definitely agree. And so, Chris, first of all, I want people to know where they can 
find you and how I can get in contact with you then, I'm going to have people give, have you give my audience a little taste of your interview style because I'm going to have you turn the mic on me and ask me a couple questions. But first, let's figure out where people can find you and where people can find your very addictive podcast. Yeah, no problem. So the main place that you can go to find me is chrismartinstudios.com, and you can find pretty much every link to all of my stuff on that website. Uh, so uh, the Getting Work to Work podcast, you can go to gwtw.co, uh, which basically is just a redirect to the page on Chris Martin Studios. Uh, I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, those are the primary social networks that I'm on. So you can pretty much find me at, uh, by going to chrismartinstudios.com and just going from there. And, yeah, we'll have every um, piece of information in the show notes. And um, you guys know how to get to show notes. And um, if you guys click on the cover artwork of any podcast, you um, can get to the show notes depending on if the podcast host puts them in. The podcast host puts them in because I know you guys listen to 90% of podcasts in general on mobile. I try to do my hardest to put show notes in. I don't know about this, though, but um, maybe we can convince them to put show notes in. Although I think he does a pretty good job with work to work. I have getting uh, work show to work. <laughs> yes. Well, ninety ninety percent of podcasts are listen on mobile. So you may have to work on that, Chris. But um but show notes are the death of a podcast that I have come to find out. By the time you're done editing the podcast and producing the podcast, you don't want to look at the dang show notes. But I do it for you guys, so that's enough about me rambling. So, Chris, <laughs> I want you to ask me a couple questions. You got it. So the first question that I have for you, Lynn, is you strike me as someone who's fearless. Uh, and, and so how did you learn to overcome your fear to be able to do what you want? Because I grew up without a physical disability. I grew up in the mainstream classroom. I grew up slipping over my dang feet. I grew up with able-bodied um, classmates. And so, yeah, I am fearless. I do have a little bit of yeah, but um, that doesn't stop me. I mean, I grew up with able-bodied classmates, and still to this day, um, I'll be with able-bodied classmates in a fashion journalism program. No special ed classmates to me. So I think that helped me with my overcoming my fears of having cerebral palsy. That's awesome. If you could give any advice to, uh, you know, a creative professional who's feeling stuck or insecure in their work, what would you say to them? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I would um, say just do it and ask people around you to help you. Ask people around you to help you. Asking people for help is not a sign of weakness, asking people for help is a sign of strength. So that would be my advice. That's great advice, too, because the the thing that struck me when engaging with you on Twitter is that you seem to be fearless in the ask. Uh, you ask as many people to be on your podcast and to be a part yeah. of your life, and that was fascinating to me. There's there's no hesitation on your part to ask. Was that something that you had to learn, or did 
do you always know to ask for help? I accepted my disability at a very young age. I discovered at age six that I had a physical disability. It wasn't until I was in seventh grade that I discovered um, the call letters for cerebral palsy, CP, aka CP, and then wasn't really in high school did I do it until high school did I do a deep dive into exactly what CP is, but part of having a disability, you have to ask for help. There's no way I can function without asking for help. I mean, I'll ask complete strangers if they can open up the doors for me to get me into places, out of places. So, and, um, so that's just my personality. When I can't figure stuff out, I ask for help. That's great. And it's so important, too, I think. One of the things that, that I've learned when I have students that have disabilities is is that I see them as the human beings that they are. And it's not that we, we don't see people with disabilities as less than human, but we forget that they're humans as well. And so, you know, I think that's what I appreciate about your podcast and the way that you reach out to people is that you're reminding people that we're all humans and that we're all connected and that we can all help each other. And I think that's so inspirational. Exactly. And do not judge a book by its cover. I am a mm -hmm. woman that is being going to be a fashion journalist, and I will always, if I – Still, as being a fashion journalist, I will always have this podcast, and I will figure out a creative way to become a fashion journalist through my program. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I hope you guys enjoyed another fabulous episode. This podcast has been sponsored by... Grace by Grit, Grace by Grit is a closing line out of California, and they're giving you 20% off when you type in the code Excel Butterfly. This podcast has also been sponsored by Kitta, K-I-T-T-E-R, and what Kitta does is a desktop app for Twitter, and they or you can compose a tweet, but the cool thing about them is they put the trending hashtag with it. And so we're excited to bring on another sponsor, which I just acquired last night by accident. And so I will be explaining that to you guys more on Monday, who the sponsor that I acquired accidentally last night is. And I hope you guys enjoyed another fabulous episode with Chris. And as Chris said, I'm going to be on getting things to work. And um, that episode should be really fun. And so I hope you guys listen to Chris's episode, especially my episode, when we do it. And so I hope you guys enjoyed another fabulous episode. Thanks, you guys. Are you still there? All right. Thank you, Wayne.